a long time ago, I made up in my mind that I wanted to join the Army for freedom, justice, and peace. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Do people try to turn you around when you're oh, making yes. decisions? Oh yes. You know, one I really, really know that tried to turn us around with everything he had, but it just didn't work. Oh, Bull Connor, and I hope he met the Lord somewhere on the road that would change his heart because he would, not only the name callings and the way he would give his authority and he would have the farmers to turn those water holes, sick the dogs on us. Oh yes, they tried to turn us around. And I never forget coming across that bridge they call it Bloody Sunday. The Edmund Pettus Bridge. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. A girl got pulled off from the crowd and they took a rod and kept over and stuck that rod down and Doc King would let us stop to help her. We had to keep marching. That's the reason they call it Bloody Sunday. So when you think about that and think about where we have come from and just sitting here seeing us now sitting here, why they black? sitting here is evidence God was in the plan. When he get ready to deliver us, he does it. Kentucky's movement was equally as rich and is it rich, and the Civil Rights Hall of Fame captures that. And we appreciate the work that you all do at the University of Kentucky and your willingness to work with us to try to document some of the life history and work of these people. And I'm a believer that we should never ever lose this history. A lot of people don't know and I'm still concerned. It's important that people be able to go back and to look at black and white people in this state who have made some progress, who have made some contribution to social progress. That put to find me. And I was willing to go to jail, get killed, to be because see, where I lived at, it won't nothing for you to go down in the woods and see a black man hanging, a little black boy hanging. That won't nothing. You could see that. Down in the woods, and that's where we lived, in the woods. Had a little path. And the white person didn't go to jail for doing nothing to a black person. Nothing. Don't care if you kill him, don't care if you hang him, it's just like you kill a rabbit. I was about seven, I guess, when I said something to my mother about the nigger who worked across the street, and she took me by the back of my shirt and over to the sink in a bar of Life Boy soap and washed my mouth out with Life Boy soap. For instance, my father and mother sent my sister Beverly and me in successive years to a place called the Highlander Folk School. And Highlander Folk School was a place where it was an interracial camp, so to speak, where I guess we were looking for Nirvana or something, I don't know, but it was wonderful, wonderful. So you've been arrested 37 times in Louisville? In Louisville. And then you've been arrested other times in other parts of the country? In, in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I've been to prison in Georgia. Uh, I've been to prison in Alabama. Uh, I've been to Parchman. Uh, let's see, where else did I go to jail? I, I've been to jail in South Carolina. And I've been to jail in Washington, D.C., moving up south. <laughs> were you in those marches? No, I was at home raising money to get people out of jail who were arrested during those marches. Because I had five children, it really wasn't practical for me to get arrested. Although to this very day, it is a slur on my reputation that I've never been able to get arrested. I mean, seriously, everybody I know in the movement was arrested. I just missed it. We would always sing, mm -hmm. we would always sing in jail. 
we would sing in jail and we'd pray and sing and that we'd had bands in jail. We had guys playing the drums, ching, 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 bong, and had trumpets and everything. We had great music in jail. It was a time when you could feel the blood rushing through your veins. That's the only way I can describe it. You felt it inside out. You knew it, you lived it, and you thought and you knew you was on the precipice of something important. There's something important and that you had a role in it. Did you ever have any experiences with the Klan? Yes, I did. I had a great experience with the Klan. They hate me. <laughs> how, do, how do you know that? What, tell us what happened. I had a real uh, anti um, mask bill, anti-mask bill, prohibiting anyone from wearing a mask in public or putting a cross on public property. It was anti-Klan bill. Well, when I introduced that bill, the grand drag, grand drag, drag I believe, of the Klan, he and his buddies came to Frankfurt. So I went on before the committee that evening, I called my husband Powers, and I said, and he always told me, he said, well, I saw you on TV, on the news. He said, you seem so nervous. I said, if you had that grand devil standing behind you, you'd be nervous too. I didn't call him grand dragon. I said, the devil. I said, that grand devil was standing behind you, you'd have been nervous too. It was an ugly time uh, in this community. Uh, you have to admire the parents and the kids sent those kids on those buses. All you had to do was look, I mean, you know, just, it, they had policemen, you know, you, you had to escort these buses to these schools. You had to have police at these schools. As a Christian, if you are not engaged in social justice, something is wrong with the way that you read the Bible. We have to open the doors wide enough so whether you are oppressed because of color or sexuality or gender or disability or gender identity or nationality, whatever it is that we say, we all want to go through those justice doors and we don't want to leave each other behind. I am proud to be a feminist, and my version of a feminist is a woman who makes her own choices, who believes that all women um, have a God-given right to the same opportunities that men do. Women elected positions. You had Senator Powers. You had May Street Kid. Uh, you had Lois Mars. Probably out of the first 60, 70 houses that we built, 90 plus percent of them were sold to single mothers who were raising kids. And they were built mostly by African-American ex-offenders who was coming back from prison. One of my last responsibilities at the NAACP's National Office was coordinating the funeral services for Rosa Parks. Pasaré por este mundo una sola vez. Si hay una cosa buena que pueda hacer, si hay una buena acción que pueda hacer, una palabra buena que pueda decir, la haré esa acción, diré esa palabra, porque pasaré solo una vez. I will be in this world only one time. If I can do anything good for someone, if I can say anything good to someone, I will do the work, I will say the work. because I will be here only one time. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me, over me, and before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. That's my favorite. I met her before I'd be a slave. I'd be buried in my grave 
and going home to my Lord and be free.